This is Ryan Fitzgerald, and I am proud to introduce you to the man who has been my pastor my entire life, Mr. Jim Jenkins, and this is Heaven Bound. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. Yes, we did change our beginning song. There's nothing wrong with your radio or your computers. And seeing as this is December, we just thought it'd be a little fitting to mix things up a little bit. And there is a reason behind I'll Be Home for Christmas. The big question that we push through, do you know where your permanent home is? Hopefully you know for sure that your home is going to be in heaven. And what better place to be on Christmas than at your permanent home in heaven? There's a song that we love to sing where this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Our troubles are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me to heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. This is not our permanent home, friends. Hopefully you'll enjoy the program today and get something out of it. And by the end of the program, you'll know for sure that you're going to be at your permanent home in heaven. And as always, I am Doug Benedict. And today I'm joined with a special group of, they're personally my favorite girls. I actually have my wife and my two daughters in the sound booth this morning as we're doing the radio program. Marissa, you want to say hi? Hi. That was Marissa. And if you come, if you have kids, if you're an adult, you'll get to meet great people just like, I don't want to say just like us because I don't think we're anything special, but our church is just full of great people. So why don't you come out and join, plan on joining us today. Today is the first Sunday in December. So we will have our fellowship breakfast beginning at 9 o'clock followed immediately after by Sunday school at 9.30. Then we will have the morning service at 10.30. We will break at noon for lunch, and we will resume one more time upstairs at 1 o'clock this afternoon. And you might ask, what do you do with so much time at church during the day? Well, in Sunday school, we break up into groups. We have really little kid groups. And then we have an older kid group, which Marissa and Madeline are in. How many kids are in your class, Marissa? Maybe like 13. I'm not sure. So that's a pretty good group. If you have kids, they go up to, I think, right into the teenage years. So they're more than welcome in those classes. They're taught by a great group of teachers. And then we also have teen classes. Personally, I think the men's Teen men's group has probably by far the best Sunday school teacher there is, but that's, I'm just being a little partial on that one. But we do break up the girls and guys, mostly because guys tend to show off when they're around girls, and you can't get down and serious with stuff. So we break them up, and we tend to what needs they have, what God has laid on the teacher's heart, and the adults stay out in the main classroom. And today we do have someone extra special. We have missionaries Bryant and Nicole Frattoli, they are missionaries to Italy, so they'll be with us today, filling in on how their mission is going out in Italy, so come and enjoy them as well. Only three weeks away. Actually, I'm sorry, we only have two more weeks away, and it will be Christmas Sunday. A lot of people come to church on Christmas Sunday, even if they don't ever come, and we would just really like to open our doors up and say, come give us a try. And as always, you don't have to wait for the 21st to come try us out for the first time. Why not make it today? Today could be the first day that you step foot into our church and just become part of our church family. We're just full of normal people. We've got construction workers, contractors, teachers, geeks, farmers, just normal people that you see on the street. And if you'd like to get here, Try your GPS at 6968 Sweeney Road in Gregg, New York. Or you can come the old-fashioned way, head north out of Boonville on Route 12, make a right on a Burdick's Crossing Road. Or you can come south out of Lowville and on also on Route 12, make a left on Burdick's Crossing Road. And there are 
blue signs that say Calvary Bible Church out on Route 12 to kind of help you along that way. So once you get on Burdick's Crossing Road, you take that to the end, make a left onto Greg Road, and drive up the hill. Your first right-hand turn will be Sweeney Road. Make a right turn onto Sweeney Road, and we will be up there about 200 yards on the right. But let's get ready for Pastor to come. If you have your Bibles with you, turn to Matthew chapter 1. And he's going to explain there as to why the real reason that God came down to this earth in the form of a man. There's a lot of stipulations of whether he actually came, and Satan's done a great job of kicking him out of Christmas by the world's standards. But there is a real reason why he came, and I hope you catch why that is. But before that, let's listen to the Majesty Choral and Orchestra as they sing, O Come All Ye Faith. Good morning again, folks. It's great to have you with us. Appreciate Doug and the intro there. It is the Advent season. I don't usually call it that. I only say that because I saw something my brother wrote once. But he said, well, what's the Advent season? Well, it's about the birth of the Christ. And in connection with the song that we played this morning, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 1, we read about that. And let me quickly say this, that the Gospels are not a biography of the Lord Jesus Christ's life. 
They are merely events that occurred in his life, really the last three and a half years of his life. The Gospel of John itself, while it may cover a three and a half year period, really from chapter 11 on, uh, in the 21 chapters of John, from chapter 11, the first 10 chapters cover like three years and four months. The last 11 chapters cover about a two-month period, maybe even less. I know when we get to chapter 12, it's only covering about a week. But the Gospel of John does not present the birth of Christ because the Gospel of John presents Jesus as the Son of God. The Gospel of Mark, there is no genealogy simply because Mark presents Christ as the servant. And as a servant or a slave, he would have no genealogy. The Gospel of Luke presents Jesus in this light. His favorite, this is what Christ called himself the most, the Son of Man. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save. The Son of Man is as this or that. The Gospel of Luke presents Jesus as the Son of Man in that there is a genealogy there. And here where we find a lot of Bible critics. People want to criticize the Bible and find fault with the Bible. Say, well, the genealogy in the Gospel of Luke is not the same as the genealogy in the Gospel of Matthew. Well, duh. No, it is not. Uh, it, the Gospel of Luke, pre it presents Jesus the Son of Man, and so in it we would find the genealogy, we do find the genealogy, of Mary, his mother. Now, the Gospel of Matthew presents Jesus as King of the Jews. Let me just say that again. Matthew presents Christ as the King of the Jews. Mark presents him as a servant. Luke presents him as the Son of Man. John presents him as the Son of God. Since God has no beginning and God has no end, then we would find really no genealogy in John. The only thing that John really says about the birth of Christ is in chapter 1, and I believe verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. What a verse that is. That is one tremendous verse. But in the Gospel of Matthew, we find the angel appearing to Joseph. And Joseph, having found out that Mary is engaged or a spouse wife, and things were somewhat different or a little different in Jewish, Jewish culture, I'll get that out, in that if you were espoused to someone, you were the same as being married, except you had not consummated the marriage and the wedding supper, the wedding feast had not taken place yet. But you were the same as being married. In that espousal period, your husband-to-be would be building you a home of some kind, and he would come at any time. He didn't even have to announce himself. Some would merely cry, the bride and groom cometh. Now, in the Gospel of Matthew, Joseph has found out that Mary is with child, and he knows that he is not the father. And he is minded, he is going to put her away. Several interpretations on it. The best one really is this, that he was going to divorce her and put her away. Some have thought that he would stone her because evidently what had happened, she had not cried out. But I kind of have the idea that Joseph was going to divorce her and to put her away privily or privately. But while he was contemplating doing this, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, to be the, thy wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Ghost. And he said, the angel said, it is a fulfillment, a fulfillment of Isaiah, in which it says a virgin shall conceive and be with child. Somebody, now immediately, again, the Bible critics, the Bible scoffers, the Bible deniers, want to say, well, that's not what it means. Behold a young woman. What is so, really, what is so spectacular about a young woman getting pregnant? Nothing. See, he said, he said to the king, he said, ask a sign. Well, I'm not going to ask a sign. So as I said, okay, God himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and be with child. And she'll bring forth a son. And this is what the angel said to it, him, that a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son of thou, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. 
This morning, we think about that. Great is, and I know I'm misquoting this verse, but you'll get the general idea that God was manifest in the flesh. Great is the mystery of God that God was manifest in the flesh. Now, some of you listening may belong to a particular uh, religion, and you say, well, Jesus was not God. Uh, he, was, he never claimed to be God. Well, that's a lie. He claimed to be God over and over. Over and over he claimed to be God. When people would worship him, if he were not God, why would he allow people to worship him? And I, you can give me all the arguments you want, but I'm telling you that Jesus was God in the flesh, you get on the internet and you type that kind of thing in, who was Jesus? Man, you get all kinds of kooks on there. I want you to know this morning, there, are, there can only be one or two things here. One of two things. One of two. Either this, that there's God, that there is God. And we believe in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are God is one, singular, but manifests himself as three different personalities, characteristics, but he's just still the same God. That, now, some uh, modalism w would say that, well, he is God, but he just chooses to have three different characteristics, and, but he really not. No, no, we believe in the Trinity, but we believe in God. There's either God or there's nothing. You say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, either there's God or everything, is el everything else is simply by chance. By chance. In an airplane, there are like approximately, don't, but there are approximately six million parts to an airplane. In and of itself, none of those parts will fly. But you put it together with a captain, with a right guy behind the seat, that plane is meant to fly. Now, I don't like flying, but a plane is meant to fly. It's not meant to crash. It's meant to fly. That's what it does. But you got to have all the parts put together and a captain in it. Suppose, suppose I say, well, let's go for a hike. We go for a hike, and lo and behold, we find a 747 in the woods. There it is, a 747. Total, complete, there it is. We can fire it up, and it would fly. It probably wouldn't fly very far with us as the pilot, but it would fly. But we find a 747, totally complete, that just happens to be in the woods. Nobody built it. It just occurred. You say, that is absolutely ridiculous. Sure is. Absolutely. You say, well, preacher, you're not going to find a 747 totally complete in the woods, ready to fly if a captain were up here. Well, you're right. You're right. You know, we just didn't walk out in the woods one day and find Mount Rushmore. Somebody designed it. I believe the guy's name was Guzman or Gautman. It was, gee, something. I remember. Borgman. Yeah, Borgman. That was his name. Yeah, starts with a G, starts with a B, but, you know, the uh, Borgman. And he designed and Mount Rushmore. I think his son finished it, but that was that. It just didn't happen. You just didn't walk out in the woods, and after billions of years, whoa, there's Washington and Lincoln and Jefferson and Roosevelt on Mount Rushmore. I mean, that well, that's amazing. Boy, it just, no, no, somebody designed it. Somebody designed the airplane. It didn't just happen. We are more complex than any airplane uh, that has ever existed. So I go back to the idea. It's either God or everything's by chance. Everything is by chance. And anybody who, that says that, well, everything just happened. You know, the human cell is amazing. And, and contain the human cell's DNA, that long string of, characteristics that make us unique and who we are and what we are and do you realize that without the right chemicals and so forth in the cell that it wouldn't mean a thing well that just happened do you know that nothing cannot create knowledge nothing cannot who 
and I'm, I, I know you say, well, you're rambling. No, I'm not rambling. I'm trying to get to a point that nothing cannot create knowledge. You say, well, people just happened. Well, where was the knowledge that was necessary? How was that created? You, you just can't do that. So it's either God or it's by chance the evolutionist. A group of evolutionists one day got together and said, well, we know enough about designing and so forth that we don't simply need any God anymore. And so they got together and they elected one guy to tell God, God, we don't need you anymore. So the evolutionist says to God, God, we're pretty smart. We've developed, we've come a long way and uh, we don't need you anymore. God said, is that right? Yep. He said, that's right. He said, well, why don't we have a contest? Evolution said, okay. He said, why don't we create man the old fashioned way? Can you do that? He said, yeah. He said, I can do that. So the evolutionist bent down and scooped up a handful of dirt. And God said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. He said, you got to find your own dirt. See, the thing is, it's either the evolutionist or it's God. We read in Matthew chapter 1, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is by interpretation, God with us. God himself. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Let us, let us make man in our image. All things were created by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. He is the sustainer. All things were made by him. Listen, God Almighty. You say, well, why would he do that? Why would, why would God do that? Why would God come down here and do that? Well, for one simple reason, dear friend, that we are sinners, lost, broke, and we need help. Christmas is, I have mixed feelings. You know, and the older I get, I guess the more mixed feelings I have about it. It's always, it always has been my favorite time of the year. And there is a tremendous attack on Christmas in America now by the atheists. What I don't understand is about this, for people who don't believe God exists, how come they're always so mad at him? They're always mad at God and mad at Christians. and Mad, mad, mad. Why are they so mad if they don't believe he exists? What's, what harm is it? Anyway, Christmas time. and Let me say Merry Christmas. I didn't say Happy Holidays. Merry Xmas. Merry Christmas. But anyway. We attribute to Santa Claus, unfortunately, many of the same attributes. Uh, he's making a list, checking it twice, going to find out who's not or nice. Well, that's omniscience. He knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. That's omniscience. Uh, we attribute to, to Santa Claus. See, Santa knows everything. Well, God knows everything. We attribute to God on the presence, which means you can be everywhere. Well, that's what we say to Santa Claus. He'll come down the chimney at 12 o'clock, everybody's house at uh, in the night. And one night at 12 o'clock, he comes down everybody's chimney on the presence. He's omnipotent. He can bring toys to every girl and boy, and toys in girl and boy land, however that is. See, the devil has done everything he can to get Christ and transpose him out of Christmas. The angel said to Joseph, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is by interpretation, God with us. God with us. God came down. Jesus was born. For he shall save his people from their sins. Why did Jesus come? Why did God come down here? Why did God leave heaven and come down here? Because men are sinners and men need help. And a man can't help a man. Doug's sitting here next to me, and I said, well, Doug, I'd like to save you, but I can't save Doug. I can't save Doug. How could I save Doug? I need, I need somebody to save me. God came down. 
Now, it's either God or it's by chance. My friend, I want you to know that you can trust the Bible and believe the Bible to be true. That God really did come down. That Jesus really did come down. And he really was born in that manger. And he really did live. And he really did die. And the last three hours of the cross had to have been horrific when Jesus died. And he really did arise from the grave. And he really is seated at the right hand of God where he makes intercession for us. Listen, Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. God with us. How comforting is that? How wonderful is that? In Acts chapter 20 and 21, Acts 20 and 21, talks about the, there are two things that are necessary. Repentance toward God and faith toward the, our Lord Jesus Christ. What is necessary for a man to go to heaven? What is necessary? To believe in God? No. Believing in God will not get you to heaven, friend. I can't tell you how many people say, I believe in God. Most people would say, well, I believe in God. Now, the God of the Bible and the God they believe in is probably different things. The God of this world believes in a sissified Jesus, some Western European long-haired pretty boy. That's not what Jesus, whose hands never did any work and whose feet never walked. God with us. Jesus came down. What is necessary? One, it's repentance toward God, which means we change our mind about who God is, about who we are. See, repentance really means change of mind. That's what it means. It's a change of mind that will lead to a change of action. People say, I believe in God. Oh, I believe in God. I guess I'm going to have No. Even the devil believes in God. The devil believes in God. What is necessary? Repentance, a change of mind. Man, I'm a sinner and I'm lost. And man, I need help. And there's nobody in this world that can help me. But God can help me. And God sent his only son to die on the cross. Jesus came forth from God. You say he was created? No, he was not created. I cannot explain all that there is to explain about it. I'll just simply tell you what the Bible says. You say you believe what the Bible says? Absolutely. Jesus came forth and died on that cross. What is necessary? Repentance toward God. God, I see myself as a sinner. I see myself as lost. I see that I have no hope. There's no hope in the church. There's no hope in good works. There's no, good, there's no hope in a good life. There's no hope. But I see that Jesus died and have faith toward Christ. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith. Believing that Jesus can do what he said. What did he say? He said, any that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Somebody says, well, I believe in Jesus and I believe in God. That's fine. But there's a, something a little beyond believing, and that is receiving. John 1, 12 says, but as many as received him to them, gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. See, there's one thing about believing, but there's another thing about going just a little step beyond that and receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. My friend, Christmas season is here. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. The greatest gift ever given was the Lord Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. He came down. My friend, he came and he lived and he died so that you might live forever and ever. This Christmas season, why not accept the greatest gift ever given, the Lord Jesus Christ? Have repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, trust him today. Call upon him today because listen to me, listen, tomorrow just might be too late. Everybody likes to receive gifts on Christmas. Aren't you glad that Jesus gave us the best gift there possibly is? A home in heaven. We played the song in the beginning, I'll be home for Christmas. Will your home be in heaven or will your home be somewhere else? If you have any questions on how you can know for sure that your home will be heaven, give us a call. Our phone number here is 315-348-6271, or you can send us an email. Our email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. Or even better yet, why don't you come join us today? There's an empty place in a pew that can only be filled by you. 
Thank you again for joining us this half hour. Lord willing, we'll catch you again next week on Heaven Bound.